Hello, this is Bimbala Fernandez. And I'm here with Dominique Edwards. And today we are going to talk about how losing our parents can really affect your mental health. Um, as you guys should know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, Dominique and I are making this video to share our trauma, our struggle, and uh, just our stories of how losing a close family member has affected us and affected our mental health. A lot of people are like too prideful to really talk about how they feel about the situation. In 2013, my mom died of colon cancer. She passed three days after my birthday, my 24th birthday. Um, you know, it was, it's kind of surreal. It still kind of feels like she's on vacation. <laughs> But, um, you know, it, it's real. Um, I haven't been able to call or get a phone call from mom in about five years. Um, my mom didn't tell me she was sick. Uh, she, I think that happens a lot with people when parents have cancer. They yeah, don't, it's like... They don't share that. It's like they don't want to hurt their, their, their child, so they don't, they don't tell you, I'm sick and I have cancer. They hide it from me. But it ends up doing more damage than good, I feel like. Like, I, I yeah. wish, I wish there was more that I, I wish, it's like, I almost wish I had time to prepare, to prepare myself. I mean, at the end of the yeah. day, you can't prepare yourself for losing a mother. It's how the fuck do you prepare yourself for that? But, it, yeah, I feel like it would have been a little bit easier, maybe, to cope with. Definitely. Yeah. And also, just little things, like, my mom, at the time, um, I was back and forth to my boyfriend's house in New Jersey. Um, I'm from New York, and um, you know, it was Christmas 2012, and I chose to spend that Christmas with my boyfriend's family. And had I known that my mom was sick, obviously, like you know, I would have been there. But um, you know, she she was very private, and she chose to tell us that she had um, a blocked intestine. And that's why she was losing weight, and that's why she was eating, and she wasn't able to keep her food down. <clears throat> it came to, I believe it was like beginning of May. I went to Greenwich Hospital, which is where my mom was, and um, I went there one day, and she wasn't there. And all the staff in the hospital were like, you know, like I'm so sorry. And I'm like, why are you? Why are you sorry? Like, what? Why? They're like. You don't know. I'm like, no, where's my mom? They're like, well, she was transferred. I was like, where is she transferred to? And my sister, my older sister, was her um, healthcare proxy. So um, they wouldn't tell me anything. So your sister knew what you did? Yeah, my sister knew. Um, so, and, and my sister's, my sister's like academically brilliant, but I'm more like street smart. So yeah. we could have gotten her, you know. But yeah. um, so they said, I'm, I'm so sorry. Your mom's been transferred. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what is so going sorry? on? Like, why are you sorry? Yeah. Like, what is going on? So I called my sister, and she was like, well, we have to transfer mom to a different hospital, someplace where she'd be more comfortable, and they would, you know, manage the pain a little better. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, what, what hospital? Pain? Like, what? Yeah. Like, what's going on? What hospital? She gave me the name of the hospital. Um, it was actually Calvary Hospice in the Bronx. Yeah. Hospice. Hospice. I knew, like, you know what hospice means. And it's crazy, no, I didn't know what hospice was You have an until, idea. No, I did really? not know what hospice was until a week before my mom went to hospice. No. I don't know what doctor, doctor and nurse. I didn't know what hospice was. I had an idea about the hospice. But I thought, okay, it could be a hospice and a hospital and like, you know, like a center for cancer. It could yeah. be like everything. So I really, I went to the website and I was like really delving in and trying to get all the details. Yeah. And trying I, to educate yourself about the situation. Right, and, and I, I learned that it was uh, end, of, end of life care. It's a place where they take you to make you feel comfortable. Yes. A hospice yeah. is a place yeah. where they take you to die. Like, <laughs> straight up. They, yeah. they take you there to die. Um... So I went to the hospice, I went into the room and I saw my mom, and I was like, mom, what is going on? Like, why are you here? Like, what, what, why is this happening? And she, you know, still wasn't telling me anything. Um, I asked the nurses, and they said that you have to ask your mom. I'm like, but she's here, is she going to yeah, leave? because they, they can't tell you, but my situation was a little bit different because I'm my mom's only child, so, and she wasn't married. So they had to tell me because I'm her beneficiary. But they told me, like, I, 
you didn't know. And it's like when you have a doctor telling you about your parent in that kind of situation and they're telling you like you didn't know. No, I didn't know. They, they, she kept it from me. And they kind of look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, like, like how do you not did know? You not know? Right. Did you not see the right. symptoms or did you not see this? Did you not see that? And it's like, no, I, I didn't. Right. So it's like it's kind of like a slap in the face. And then also, bit. even if you do see the symptoms, your it's your mother. Like your mom can tell you whatever she wants. She can yeah. say, "I have a it. stomach ache. I didn't want to eat. It. That's it." Yeah, yeah, that 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 yeah. So the hospice she was in there for a majority of May. Um, you know, this month's May. Yeah. Um, and then she held on. My sister's birthday was May 12th. She held on. My birthday May 25th. She held on, and then she died on May 28th. Um, I was home making dinner with my then boyfriend, and my sister called, and she was like, "Them?" I'm like, "Yes." She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Making dinner." And my sister and I don't talk, so yeah. like for her to call me like that it's randomly, like, unless. Like Unless, like, she really needed something, like, oh, mom really, really is craving, like, fresh grapefruit juice. Can you bring it to the hospice? I'd be yeah. like, okay, cool. But she doesn't call at night. So this was, like, 10.30 at night. She called me. Um, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making dinner. And then she said, okay, well, I have to tell you something. And I was like, what is it? And she's like, um, well, and I'm like, what? And she's like, mom's heart stopped. And I was, I, I was kind of like... I think I was more so in shock. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a very emotional person, so I was just like... Or it's like, why are you lying to me? Right, like yeah. what? Like that there's no way, like, there's no, like how do you... As your mom, you think that there's superwoman, like, my mom's superwoman. She can, she can do anything. She, oh, this is just cancer, it's okay. She'll, she'll get over it. She, right. she can get through it. She's been through all of that, so... Um, and you never think that that your your mom is gonna die before she gets to see you have children, have before, kids, yeah, and before then, you get yeah. married, or before she sees you turn into who you're really supposed to be yeah. in your life. Like I'm just twenty something, like just getting started. So I was um, I was pretty much in shock. Um, my boyfriend grabbed me off the floor and drove me to the hospice. Um, my sister was standing outside the door. I don't know why they had my mom still like laying there dead on the bed, yeah. but they left her there. And so, like, I think they waited till the family came and the yeah. coroner's office or the mortuary, they, whatever they, they waited. Um, she was there. I was, I like, I've never seen a dead person, so I kind of like when I got there, I gave my sister a really big hug, and that, for, like, that I'm super not emotional. So for me to like embrace my sister and for her, she's not emotional either. So for her to embrace me like that, like that's something that we've never um, felt in our lives. Yeah. Um, she, so we went into the room and, uh, you know, I just, I was kind of just looking at her because she, it was so surreal. Dream. Like, like this is not, not true. You know what I mean? Like, that's not my mother. And she, you know, she was down to about 90 pounds. Um, she had no fat on her body. She was just skin and bones. She was, she was still warm. And um, I grabbed her hand, and I was holding her hand until um, it got, you know, like stiff. It gets around. harder. Yeah, I got stuff. stiff around my hands, and I like it was, it was it's a little, it's weird. It's just I still feel like I'm like dreaming. Like I, I feel yeah. like it's not real. I don't know if it's ever going to feel. It feels like it's. It, I don't know. I just feel like. I'm, like I'm like retelling a story that didn't happen to me yeah and it's I think that maybe I'm in denial uh yeah uh, I mean that I, I am I, I don't I don't even know like how to describe it um I miss my mom every day two years after my mom died my dad died um medicated <laughs> I don't know if I should even say that but I'm, I'm heavily medicated um, I desperately need more grievance counseling because I haven't even been able to grieve yet how do you do that <laughs> how, how how do you grieve my mom's not here yeah I mean thank God that they're like non-conventional ways of obtaining like therapy like I started using this company called better help and, um, you know, it's a digital therapy service. 
um, and it, it's great. It's like on the go. Like if I'm sitting in the car and I'm thinking about her and I'm thinking of like, what happened, why did this happen? I'm always asking myself why, why, why. I can always text or video chat or call my counselor, and she's like, you know, at my disposal. Yeah. Um, so BetterHelp is like a great platform, but it, nothing, nothing ever brings it back. Nothing fills that hole nothing in your is heart. Nothing fills that void, and it's. It's crazy because you try to fill that void in crazy ways. Oh my like, god, like relationships and, and that's yeah. the worst idea ever. You're like, you're gonna, no, it's never gonna work. It's never. You and cannot replace the love lost yeah. with, with like a significant other. It's Yeah. Okay, so my mom had breast cancer. Um, my mom got diagnosed in 2017 with stage 2 breast cancer. Um, I remember my next door neighbor, they renewed their vows. I think like their 10 year, maybe 10 or 5 year um, wedding vows. And we had went to Marina Del Rey. And my mom, she was just acting weird. Like, but she's always goofy. And I, I call my mom baby. So I'm like, baby, why are you acting so weird? Like, she wasn't really like being joke. Like, she wasn't joking. Because me and my mom were like disgustingly weird. Like, I would dig her and I was not around there. <laughs> and like, I would do that. That's what you're she, supposed to be with yeah, your mom. <laughs> and I would like do stuff like that. And she's like, it wasn't laughing the way she normally would. Yeah. So we ate our food, came home. And um, I think she was brushing my hair or something. She left the room and she said, Dominique, I have something to tell you. I have breast cancer. I don't know why, but I just, I, I was sitting down on like on the edge of my bed, I think, and I just ran to the front door. Now why I ran to the front door, where I was going, I do not know. But I remember I just ran to the front door and I, I walked out, I ran out the door and I fell on the grass. And um, I just, it's like my body got weak. I, I just, I sat there. And she pulled me up and she's like, Dominique, I need you to be strong. I'm like, strong? Yeah. Like, you're my strength. Yeah. Like, my what mom you, said that to me too. Like, I need you to be strong. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not strong. And you're she strong would tell for me, me, don't cry. I'm like, what yeah. do you mean, don't and cry? And I'm like, I'm cry, baby. I cry because the sky is blue. Like, don't tell me not to cry. Like, what? She, she, um, she helped me. Like, I've never been hugged like that in my life. And she's just hugging me. And she's like, Dominic, I need you to be strong. I need you to be strong for us. I'm like, you strong for us. Like, what do you mean be strong for us? Like, no, mommy. That's like, baby, that's you. You're strong. You, you do all of this for us. So, um, that night I cried all night. And it's like, I kept having dreams to where, like, I was crying and then I would wake up and then I would think that it like it was a dream. I thought that her telling me she had cancer was a dream. And I wake up like don't dream stuff like that. That's gonna actually happen. So I remember we woke up that Sunday morning, we went to church. After church we went to my auntie little lad's house and I remember I'm sitting on the in the living room couch next to my nana. It was my nana, me, my uncle, my cousin Dejanae, and my uncle's girlfriend. And um, my mom was sitting and she looked at my mom, my nana, and the look that she gave her, it was um, like she was sorry. Because like I said, my aunt died when I was 10 from cancer. So it's like, damn, you finna, I'm finna, she, she has to put my nana through this again. And she's like, um, I have something to tell you guys, but I'm gonna be okay. I just said, I'm gonna be okay. She looked at my nana and was like, I have cancer. But before she can even say I have cancer, I'm already crying. <laughs> so it's like, I just spilled the beans and I'm like, I'm crying and my nana's like, Dominique, why are you crying? And I'm like, I don't know, it's just, she gets to tell you something. I can't talk, I'm spitting snot everywhere. And um, I, I, I start holding my nana. And I'm telling her what my mom told me the night before, like, you gotta be strong for us. Like, you good, we gonna be okay. Like, be strong. And it's like, I'm, try I'm putting on the facade. Like, I'm trying to right. be strong, but I'm, right, I'm right. the main one crying. Right. My uncle, um, he's just looking like, he, he kind of was like stale. He really didn't know what to say or it's what like to shock. do. Yeah, like shocked. So, um, 
about his girlfriend. Everybody's just like looking at my mom and my mom. Like my, my nana's crying at this point. Like me and my nana, we just keep crying. Like the world is busy. And um, we just, just cried. I remember I cried. I felt like I cried for like a week straight. Uh, and I felt bad because I felt like me doing all that crying, it was making her feel bad. But it's like, look, you already know me. I'm a crybaby. I'm going to cry. And then she does her first dose of chemo. So I'm like, wait a minute, chemo, she's gonna go bald. So at that time I didn't make wigs. So I'm like, I need to, my mom, she's still gonna look right. My mom still, she used to wear makeup every single day, nails done. The only nail color my mom would wear is million dollar red. Her nails are always red, <laughs> always. So I'm like, we, she's still getting her nails done. We still like, we, she, she's like looking good. And I remember uh, she used to like start locking her bedroom door, and I'm like, "Why are you locking are your bedroom?" Are you bed serious? Yeah. My mom would do that too. Yeah, I'm like, "Why are you locking your bedroom?" Because I used to sleep in the bed with my mom. Like, no, we sleep my together. My mom would lock her door too. Yes, and I'm like, "Why are you locking your bedroom door?" Like, because I, I used to sleep in the bed with her. Like, I was oh I was 23 and I slept in the bed with my mom. I didn't care. Like, and, I, and it was crazy, like, I would sleep on her chest, like, I would sleep on her chest, like, uh, I'm a baby, like, I'm not, like I said, I'm her only child, so, yeah. no, we cuddled, me and my mom used to cuddle every night, and, um, we actually cu cuddled until her last day, it's, they got pictures of me sleeping in her medical, or in her bed, with, like, the cords everywhere, but, um, okay, so that day, like, I'm bamming on the door, it's like 2, 3 in the morning, I'm like, why is your door not, like, right. baby, open this door, it's time for us to cuddle. And she's like, okay, but she had like this this turban on, and I could, I wasn't paying attention that it was no hair under that turban. So she's asleep, and when she woke up, it was off. And I'm looking at her like I woke up, and I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I hurry up and move her turban up, like I move it so that like it's covered. And she's like, why you do that? I'm like, because I, I don't want to see that. And um, she's like, that. Like, why would you say that? That makes me feel bad. It's a shock to the system to see your mom. Yeah. Like, like my mom had long, pretty hair. Like, I used to always be jealous because I have, like, super nappy hair. Her hair is, like, so pretty. And I was, I was always compare her hair to Michael Jackson. I'm like, why you guys have these nice curls? And then I have, um, um, what's, uh, I, I have, uh, Nigerian hair. Yeah, so I would always get jealous. And she started crying. I was like, why are you crying? She's like, because you really made me feel bad. But they, it, I think that our parents, like our moms, had to understand that it's a yeah. shock and it's painful, painful. to see your That's mom, hell. like, to see your mom as anything but healthy. Yeah. It's like you're painful. superwoman to me, like. Right, like she's like, supposed to be taking care of us when we're sick. Yeah. We're not supposed to be watching our moms literally that disintegrate. Right. And it's absolutely nothing that you can do, and I feel like that is the worst part because I'm wa I'm watching you die, right? And it's nothing that I can do. It's ab it's nothing I can do. Okay, so our hair fell out. Uh, by the end, I think I was like 19. I was 19, like no, yeah, 19. But I was in cosmetology school. I remember when I graduated from. Um, high school she had like it looked like an uh, oxygen tank but it wasn't it was her IVs at that point she had a pick line in her neck and she was on 24 hour medicine I don't know if it was chemo I don't know what it was but I know like how I said we used to play we couldn't play like that anymore because I know it was connected to her jugular I would hit it so um I remember she walked see me walk across the stage and she's just crying like she was happy because I barely walked across the stage. <laughs> I, I didn't like school. School was not for me. I didn't like school. I, I didn't do homework. I just, I, I barely walked. So to see her walk across that stage, I, I was like, okay. I made her feel good. Like, so that was a good feeling for me. Anyway, my birthday is February 14th. Hers is the 5th of February. And she was good on her birthday. She was moving a little bit slow, but I'm like, I was used to that. Some days she had good and bad days. She's moving a, bit, a little bit slow. It's okay. I never was a really big birthday person. I never have been. So I got a cake. She got a cake. That's all I cared about. Um, February she was good. Uh, for March, good. April, good. May is like I know she's gonna say my back hurt. My back hurt. 
um and i was like i would give her like i would literally sit on her back and like give her massages or i would go like to the little massage parlors and we would get like massages but she's like it's not working it still hurts i'm like okay so my neighbor and my nana would always take her to the hospital i've never to her doctor's appointment i've never taken her to a doctor's appointment until the end i took her in total one doctor's me appointment. too that's crazy one doctor's appointment i remember um them that that doctor when i okay she's at the hospital she checked she checked in the long beach memorial and they're like showing all these tests and i remember my my ex-best friend at the time i made her go to the hospital with me i'm like i think my mom has dementia and i'm like because my mom was talking weird and she was forgetting stuff and i'm like Maybe what are you like talking about pill form morphine or pill form yeah I, I don't even know but i remember i made my best friend i was like look i don't want you to think i'm talking crazy like my mom's losing it like she she being crazy so i made her go and um She's like, no, she's gonna be okay. And I remember I walked out the room. And um, she, her and my mom are talking and like, she turned around and she looked at me. And I'm like, why are you looking at me like that? She said that my mom told her to make sure you take care of my baby. Oh, yeah. When they give up, that's... Yeah, and I'm like, what? And I remember she told me when I was in the car and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, take care of my baby. Like, I got me. She, she gonna be here. Like, what are you talking about? And, um, that was, she was in the hospital for like maybe a week. And then, um, I kept saying, when are you gonna come home? Because I got tired of it. I just felt like I was living in a hospital. I just got tired of going to hospitals. I Every hate, day. Like, to this day, I hate hospitals. Like, um, she's, uh, babe, she checked. I feel like she checked herself out of the hospital because um, she had a doctor's appointment. I she checked out like May fifth. I feel like it was. Matter of fact, no, whatever Mother's Day was, she checked out on Mother's Day. So I remember when I got her, I had flowers sitting in the passenger seat. So it'll be almost the second week of May. Yeah. So yeah, that was the second week of May, and I had flowers for her Mother's Day. I checked her out. My neighbors, everybody was like her nickname was Bootsy. Everybody was like Bootsy, how are you? doing and she's like I'm good I'm good wow. and um my nana came over like I told you my nana knew everything and, and everybody's talking me like Dominique what you gonna do Dominique you need to like really get yourself together okay I got her from under the hospital took her home she wanted watermelon so I got her in the bed and I went to the um, grocery store got her watermelon I'm cutting it up She's like, it's not sweet enough. I guess the chemo affected her taste buds. Yeah. Nothing was sweet enough for her. And it's crazy because to this day, I feel like I make everything with either too much salt or too much sugar. Like, because I was used to, like, trying to cook for her. I don't like a metallic taste. Yeah, yeah. She said, yes, metal. She said, everything tastes like metal. And I'm like, okay, I'll just add more salt, a little more seasoning. And I gave her that, um, that Monday, took her to the hospital. So City of Hope. City of Hope is a, it's a cancer, it's a breast cancer hospital. So everybody in that hospital has breast cancer. Um, Where is it? It's in South Pasadena. And um, I said, so I took her to City of Hope. To get her in the car was like so hard. Um, she kept saying, I want to get my nails done. I want to get my nails done. This is so weird because my mom would make me when we were, well, I was with her every day in the uh -huh. hospital, she would make me paint her nails. Her yeah. nails and her toenails. Busy, so she's like, no, I want to get my nails done. I don't want you to do it. <laughs> so I remember I took her to um, the nail shop on 100, uh, 135th and Avalon and I got her nails done first. And I remember the man just said, like, what's wrong with your mom? Because she was like, she, like you could, she was in so much pain. But, uh, that was the last time she was gonna get her nails done. Cause she she knew. Yeah. She knew. She knew. She million dollar red, got her nails done. Uh and um I remember I got my nails done the same color that time. Cause I just I mean I get my nails done every color, like any color. But I got them done red to match her. And um then I took her to City of Hope. And uh the doctors were like, Who are you? 
I'm like, I'm her daughter. And they're like, we've never seen you before. Like, she's been coming here three, four years. We've never seen her, seen they you before. me too. They're like, oh, she has another daughter. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, hi. and I'm like, yeah. It I'm, makes you feel like shit. It's like, yeah, that made me feel the really bad. Like, and uh, they're like, okay. So they take her in the back. They like, they ask her, can she come in the back? And you don't want to give up hope until it's really over. Like, yeah. even to the last second, you're like, come on, come on, yeah. come on. And I remember, um, they're like stage two. Like, what do you mean, like stage, like stage two, ma'am? Where you been for the last two years? Stage four. Stage four. Stage four is considered terminal, and terminal, it's, 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 it's that's nothing that they can do. The counselor is telling me, um, you know, losing a parent, I know it's hard, and I'm asking, I said, is your, is your mom still, like, at this point, like, I have an attitude, I do. Have you lost your parent? Is your mom still alive? She said, no, but I only can imagine. You can't you imagine. Can't imagine. Sorry. Don't tell me that you only can imagine, because you cannot imagine. You, you cannot imagine. put yourself in somebody's shoes that don't have their mother, because there's, ab there's absolutely nothing that you would compare that to. And it's a pain that... It's a pain I feel that never goes away. It never goes away. You you learn to cope with it, and some cope better than others, but it's there. And and, and when when she's telling me it's gonna get better, it's not gonna get. It better. does not get it better. Get like better. I hate when people say that it's gonna get better. That does that that pain, that void, that emptiness. It does not get better. I'm sorry. I feel like it gets worse. Like. It, it, get wor it gets worse. Um, so the lady is telling me it's, it's terminal. Um, so they take her and they, they, they put her in a room. Because I feel like that doctor's appointment was for them to admit her to the hospital. It was a doctor's appointment. Because like I said, she did tell me a lot. There's a lot that she didn't tell me. So, and it's a hospital or a hospital? No, this, that, this is a hospital. City of Hope okay, is a okay, hospital. Okay. And... Um, they they take me or they put her in this room because I remember it was all like we were there all day. The cancer had metastasized, meaning it spread to her her spine. When from what from what they told me, when cancer is in your spine or in your bones, it's going to continue to metastasize because your spine is literally from the top of your head to the bottom of your foot. That's your entire body. It's a matter of time before it gets to her brain. Like, I know I kept saying like mommy I need you to be strong like come on like I need no I need you to get better I need she's like I'm trying um I'm like what do you mean you're trying like you told me that you needed me to be strong I've been strong like you now you be strong you be strong for me like I need right, like don't give up like yeah like I don't know I think it's because I'm my only child like I want kids so bad so I'm like I need you to be here to, to watch my kids I need you to watch me get married yeah. like like I need you to do this like this it's so important for us we're females like, yeah we need our mother there. Like, like I need my mom there I need you my mom had a daycare I'm like I need you to watch my kid when I'm because I, I while I'm on set doing Beyonce's here like I need you I, I need you I need you I need you I remember I kept saying I need you I need you and um she went to sleep with my arm and the doctor came in and it's like all these doctors look so sad I'm like I need you guys to be happy <laughs> and um they're like okay ma'am the, the cancer has metastasized to her her spine her skull her kidneys her liver like it was everywhere it was like she had like this but she had body cancer like it was everywhere and um I said okay so doc how long we got just like that. Just like that. So I give him about a week or two. When he said that, I, I felt like I died. Like, what do you mean a week or two? Like, it's only stage two. He's like, no, ma'am, it's been, it's been in stage four for the last two years. I'm looking at her, and she woke up when the doctor got her. She's just looking at me. And I, I'm mad. Like I'm mad at her. Like, why you did? Why didn't you tell me? Like why? Like why? Like you all I have. Like you are my my mom is was my everything. They think they're protecting us. 
Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And in a way, you know, ignorance is bliss, I guess. Like, we, uh, yeah. we didn't deal with that kind of emotional trauma before we had to, I guess. Yeah. But um, it's still... It's okay. Now I'm the one that has to be over all of, all of this. I have to orchestrate my mother's death. Literally, that, that I had two weeks to orchestrate my mother's death. So what is hospice? Like I said, I didn't know what hospice was, so they're explaining a hospice. And they said this is the place where we make her comfortable until she uh, until she leaves us. So she ain't leaving me. I, I told the doctor just like that. She ain't leaving me. And they're like, oh, she, this girl wants a problem. <laughs> She just, she's not gonna accept it. No, I'm not gonna accept it. I'm not about to accept the fact that my mother is gonna leave. I'm not. I can't. And um, so the, they start giving me documents, facts. Like I feel like hospice, literally, they want to keep you in there and they want to hurry and get your ass out. Like they, they want to hurry up. So, I know they give you morphine to make you comfortable, but I also wonder, like. I, I, I agree with that. That morphine. I I, I agree with that. Uh, Cause I know they 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 gave her they gave me so many sheets. Not like that. I didn't read a lot of them. I just signed my name. And now the DNR. Um, I had an aunt that was like, "You need to sign this DNR because how would you feel if you you were in this position and we just held you on?" And I'm like, "What do you mean, like?" You held me like, what do you mean? Okay, um, a DNR, do not resuscitate. A DNR is pretty much, once that heart stops beating, that's it. That's it. We don't do anything. We close your eyes, cross your hands, and lay you there. My mom signed her own DNR. Yeah, no. And that mom, almost made me mad. I'm like, why would you sign that? Why would you want them she, to try? She was, she was, she was, uh, she was already gone. She couldn't. So I had to. Um, I signed that DNR on the 19th, 48 hours later she died.